G'day there, podcaster. Tonight we hear about your pranks gone wrong. Uh, there's one that involved hot glue and a penis. Mm. Yeah, never a good mix. Uh, we also uh, heard people's first songs that they downloaded on their iPod. Bells was interesting, to say the least. Um, certainly worth sticking around for that. Enjoy. Y'all ready for this? Here we go. Live across Australia. I love Hotmail.com. Have you stayed true to the email? <laughs> oh, like you wouldn't believe. This, this is Late Drive with Ben, Liam and Bell. I'm oh. so glad we beeped that. Oh. <laughs> Come get me something I can feel. On over. Yes, uh, good evening Australia. It's a Friday night. Let's get stuck into it. And because it's a Friday, if you get involved tonight with the show on 13 24 10, we will be uh, shouting you drinks for the night. We've got packs of Coco Locos to give away. These are sparkling alcoholic coconut waters. It's incredible, and it's only available at Dan Murphy's online. Second chance, second chance, second, second, second chance. Second chance, second chance talk back second chance, on your radio. Second chance, second, second chance, Perfect time. If there's a story you have you couldn't quite get through on the phone lines this week, 13, 24, 10. We did some good ones. Uh, tell us a story no one would believe. We did, uh, when did you have to pretend you like the gift? A lot of people will be doing that around Christmas. Oh. Oh, thanks, Arnie Shell. <laughs> uh, were you broken up with in the worst way? If you've got a story, 13, 24, 10. Another one we did was have you stepped up in an emergency? And Jack from Brisbane, good evening. You're calling up for that one. What happened? We were at the movies, uh, me, myself and a mate. I'm about 10 minutes into the movies. Larger gentleman, quite tall, sort of uh, heavy set, turned around and just grabbed his feet in front of us and stared us straight in the eyes and started pointing at his uh, throat. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he was choking on popcorn oh. um, and he was really you know, getting into this popcorn. He, he, he started choking. Uh, his partner actually got up and started walking away because she was thought he was mucking around and she was got angry at him. Oh. Um, so, so I jumped off my seat, walked around down to his, his row. At the time, I actually had a moon boot on because I'd had some ankle surgery. Uh, so I hobbled down without my crutches and then he was going all yeah, like white in the face, and I just uh, hit him in the back as hard as I could a couple of times, and he coughed it all up and all came, all came out of the seat, and uh, he he just went straight back to shoveling the popcorn in his mouth. Yeah, Jack, a crazy uh, situation. What movie were you watching? Uh, we're watching that movie, you know, Nobody, the one with. Uh... Oh, um, Bob Odenkirk. Yeah, Nobody. It's yeah. kind of like a yeah. bad John Wick. Yes, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy almost died in that movie. Certainly not a classic. Uh, we're doing Second Chance Talkback on Nova with Ben, Liam and Bell. 13, 24, 10 if you've got a story. Mildred in Adelaide, what doesn't your dad want your mum to know? Okay, so they've been married for several years. Mm-hmm. Um, about five years ago, I um, went to a particular show and I recognised my dad up on stage. He is a drag queen. Oh, oh my gosh! And your mum doesn't my, know. She has no idea, and now that he knows that I know, he's got his own wardrobe at my house, <gasps> so that he can come and get dressed here and oh, then wow. go into the show. Mildred, wow. that's actually that's a really nice thing that now you guys can bond over. Yeah, it's so funny because my mother is such a prude. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't think she'd be into it if if Dad spilled the beans? Oh. Oh, no, no, that would be instant divorce, like, seriously. Wow. Like, God comes first in the house, you know, not right. under God's roof. Well, thanks for sharing, Mildred. Uh, Hannah in Adelaide, good evening. You're calling because you had to pause the sesh. What happened? Me and my partner were going at it pretty hard. Three missed calls from his dad. On the last call we picked up, turned out his dog died. Sick one. <laughs> from the reverberations on the house because you were going out so hard. <laughs> you killed the dog. Oh, no, we were on holiday. We didn't even have the dog. Oh, that, the reverberations from the holiday. Hannah, can I yeah. ask, um, after that phone call, did you get back to things or? No, nah, anything that was up definitely came down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so less of a pause, more of a heartbreak yeah, stop. Yeah, that's, that's it. At least you love the dog. That's it. You know, if he's like, ah, oh, well, let's get, let's get a bit past that anyway. Go on, let's get into it. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. W's in the chat for this pod. Bad news, worst time. Because we were just speaking with Hannah, and she shared this story with us. Me and my partner were going at it pretty hard. Three missed calls from his dad on the last call we picked up. Turned out his dog died. 
<laughs> yeah, not great. 13 24 10 is our number. We want to know bad news, worst time. Kylie, good evening. Bad news, worst time. What happened? So I found out after my mother died that she wasn't actually my biological mother. I, I found out I was adopted the day of a funeral, you know, being an eight-year-old really upset about the fact that, you know, you're never going to see her again. And mm. my adopted father turned around and said, well, she's not your real mother because you're adopted. Oh, that's oh. how you so- found out? Oh, my gosh, that's harsh. Oh. So, Kylie, have you found and- your, your biological family now? Um, no, unfortunately, I'm still looking. Have you tried Ancestry.com? So- I've tried, I've tried everywhere. Mm. I've even done blood tests, but um, I think Kylie will have but... tried that. Well, I don't know. Like, maybe no, she, maybe she's never heard of it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you've tried that, yeah. Kylie. Oh, oh thanks, well. Kylie. Thanks, Kylie. Appreciate you giving us a buzz. Brett, good evening. Thirteen twenty four ten. Bad news, worst time. What happened? Well, I went to see that movie Marley and Me. You know the one about uh, the dog and um, yeah, the yeah. Dog passing light. Only to come home nearly in tears and having my mum tell me my actual dog had died. Oh, <laughs> so raw! The movie becomes real life. Oh, oh, is- and especially when you just write, because you, you watch a movie like that and, you know, whatever pet you have, you want to just go home and shower them with love, don't you? Like, you just mm. want to, yeah. you just think, oh man, how lucky am I? Like, the, you know, they're God's gift, aren't they? Such and, a sad movie. I mean, it would be a sick joke by your mum as well if she knew, if she'd seen the film yeah. and then she knew what yeah. happened and then you got yeah. home and she went, oh, the dog's there, but that's sad. Sorry, yeah, Brett. She, she was sitting out the front to, front to <sighs> Seth and, yeah, I mean, this is not good. Hey, Brett, did about. you ever see the sequel? No. It's just called Mary. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. Brett, I can't tell you how many times I've yeah, done that so joke. It's a good one, though, Brett. Everyone falls for it. <laughs> the Ben Lehman Bell podcast. Is that in eyes? I can't even. I think I'll leave the impressions to Liam. 13, 24, 10. Pranks gone too far. Maybe across the line. I just see this Melbourne muck up day this week, this girls' school. They stormed a Maccas. 100 Ronald McDonald's. That's crossing a line because you do not mess with Ronald. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a no, sweet Belle, prank. You like, no one got hurt. We, you know, McDonald's are a big supporter of the commercial radio industry and we don't take kindly to that sort of behaviour. Mm-hmm. Have you tried the new Grimace Shake, by the way? Oh, delicious. Wonderful. Show sponsor. If you haven't tried a Grimace Shake yet, do yourself a favour. Get four. Okay. You can you can do this thing, Ben and I do it sometimes after the show. We buy four Grimace shakes and put like twirl up all the straws and then <laughs> suck them all at the <laughs> same time. Well, yeah, they they We're all dressed it. up as Ronald, but I don't I, look personally. I don't think that it's actually trademarked, because... so they shouldn't have even done that in the first place. <laughs> mm. But yeah, they've they've been like all over media this week for it. They're getting so much attention, and you could say it has gone a bit far. Yeah, well, look, um, if you have. Uh, done a prank in the past. Maybe it went a bit too far. 13, 24, 10 is the number. We got great prizes up for grabs. In fact, we'll sort your Friday night drinks. Uh, James joins us now, mate. You did a prank that went too far. Well, my mate was sleeping and um, we ended up putting a hot glue on his hand and stick it towards his penis. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, like, it, yeah, it was pretty, it was, we felt bad the next day because like he was in hospital <gasps> And, uh, yeah, pretty much ended his trip for schoolies. So. Mm. Was he circumcised yeah. then? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure, but, like, he was very angry with all of us. Well, if he oh. wasn't before, he was after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that went pretty far. Uh, 13, 24, 10, <laughs> pranks gone too far is what we are looking for tonight. Daniel in Melbourne, your brother was part of a prank that went wrong. Yeah, hey, guys. Um, the brother was unfortunately on the receiving end of a couple of nipple piercings. Um, he had a, a cage with a couple of hermit crabs in it. Mm. Um, and me and my younger brother saw the opportunity, he went for a nap. So we went, yeah, righto, one each. Um, so we went one side of him each, lifted the top up and attached them to his nipples, a couple oh, of nipple cramps. Oh, yeah. Um, and then they were on, he started, you know, splashing around as you would, took them off once they finally let go and he had two massive holes in each nipple and... To this day, he's still rocking a couple holes in the nip. <laughs> Sometimes if he's out at the beach and the, the wind's strong enough, it might catch him just right and play him <laughs> like a pan pipe. Uh, Daniel, because it's a Friday night, mate, we're going to give you a pack of Coco Loco. Oh, beautiful. Cheers, guys. No worries at all. Only available at Dan Murphy's online. Uh, Michael is here as well. You witnessed a prank that went wrong. 
Uh, no, I actually did this with my partner. We um, brought <laughs> we brought uh, our brother-in-law some dissolvable shorts that dissolve in water. Mm. Um, <laughs> we were at a public pool. Um, he was wearing them, and he wasn't wearing any underwear. Hang on, ah. so so you yeah. bought them dissolvable shorts and then gave them to them as a gift, but they didn't know they were dissolvable, and then they wore them to the public oh, pool. Oh, no, we, we knew they were dissolvable. Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't know. Oh, he didn't know. He didn't. Why and, did they yeah, exist? Unfortunately, uh, I think just for that purpose. Yeah. So prank. Fun. Yeah. It's funny because, yeah. like, the dissolvable shorts, like, it's like it's that fine line of, like, sick prank and sex crime, isn't it? Like, <laughs> depending, oh, well, depending where they dissolve. It would have been so bad if he was wearing underwear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, really, it was his fault, but, yeah. I feel oh, like no, it was your caring. fault, mate. I mean, you bought the <laughs> dissolvable shorts. I mean, he was just trying to go for a swim. I think you were sort of heavily involved. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. The Ben, Liam and Bell podcast. Oi. Stop gooning. The next bit's about to start. It was 20 years ago today that Steve Jobs announced the iPod. And we are introducing a product today, and that product is called iPod. I happen to have one right here in my pocket, matter of fact. There it is, right there. This amazing little device holds a thousand songs, and it goes right in my pocket. Wow, a real moment in time. The audio really sounds like it's that old as well, doesn't it? Well, it was, what, 2001? Yeah. Um, yeah, and and that's the amazing thing of going 1,000 songs in my pocket. Yeah. Incredible. Now we just have everything. Well, look, we have actually uh, got the first songs we've ever downloaded. This was mine. Yes, it was, Mel. Ben loves Chumbawamba. Absolute classic. I get knocked down, Chumbawamba. It's actually still the only song you have on all of your devices. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's the only thing you listen to. Uh, ben and Bell, this was mine. I just want to wish you well. Oh, yeah. So, you know, a lot of the other guys at school were into Linkin Park and, um, <laughs> you know, an American Idiot, Green Day would have been on a lot of iPods. I was a Bernard man. You know, I wish Powderfinger was still together, but I like Bernard's side project. Catchy little number. Great song. You guys are so lame. It's so lame. I was strutting around to this song. Hey, how you doing? Oh, my God. I knew you were going to do something. I knew it. You're a weird kid. You like the Yin Yang Twins? Don't call us weird when you're listening to the Yin Yang Twins. No, we went into this and you're like, oh, we'll do ours and then we'll do yours last, Bell. And everyone's been going in and out of the studio and I knew this is not what the song... This is not the song I had on my If I was was your parents, I wouldn't... (laughs) Let that happen. <laughs> I would be checking your computer because I don't know what sort of freaky stuff you're into. Uh, Isabel, oh, so in... I just don't get to share more. <laughs> Isabel in, in Melbourne. <laughs> what was the first song you ever downloaded? The best of both worlds by Hannah Montana. You get the best of both worlds. Chill it, I'll take it slow. A lot of young girls. And boys loved Hannah Montana. Belle was more of a yin yang twins kind of gal. Hey, how you doing, little mama? Let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something. I was that you might literally like seven years old, so it's weird. Luke in Melbourne, what was the first song you ever downloaded? TikTok by Kesha. Don't stop, make it pop. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one, Luke. There's some lines in that song that haven't aged particularly well over the last month. Oh, but she's changed it when she performs it. Of that first bit? Yeah. Wake up in the morning feeling like <laughs> some guy. Do you know what she says now? <laughs> no. What does she, what does she, she feel says, like? wake up in the morning like Aunt P. Diddy. F him. Mm. Yeah, fair. Oh, okay. yeah. After all the baby oil photos. 13, 24, Tom. 13, 24, 10. <laughs> Let's stop talking about Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, guys. Everyone's getting weird about it. What was the first song you ever downloaded? Now, Belle, we know your first song was the Whisper Twins, Whisper Song, Yin Yang Twins. What was the second song you downloaded? Well, the first song I downloaded was Pass That Dutch. Which 
I was saying before, I was seven years old um, when I when the iPod came out and I downloaded that, and I, mm. that's why I was offended that you guys were joking about playing the Yin Yang Twins. But mm. I was actually seven, listening to "Pass That Dutch" <laughs> by Missy Elliott. So you know, it's not that different, really. Uh, Kelly joins us now in Sydney. What was the first song you downloaded? Where is the love by Black Eyed Peas? Oh. Oh. I mean, it's a modern classic, isn't it? It's oh, yeah. sort of like our Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> What's wrong with the world, Mama? <laughs> yeah, it's comparable. <laughs> uh, Kiara in Melbourne, the first song you downloaded on your iPod. Hey, guys, mine was Sorry for Party Rocking by Elmer oh. Fayo. Oh, you're right, you're in the house I'm doing the dance, guys. I'm doing the dance. Remember the dance? <laughs> we did have someone on the other week who um, had a, a sleepover. With one of the oh, we did with Red Foo. <laughs> yes. Red What's the other one called? Red Foo. Blue. Blue Foo. Blue Foo. Blue Foo. Blue Foo. Blue Ah, uh, <laughs> sky blue. Oh, it is right. sky blue. Sky blue. Really? Yeah, there you go. Uh, Michael, we're just talking first songs on our iPods tonight. What was yours? Mine was actually Crazy Frog. Oh. <laughs> Hilarious. Frog with his penis out. That's so cool. I, w- I always thought, how are they allowed to print this? <laughs> I know, like, we were children when that was ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding, ding. And you used to be able to get the uh, Crazy Frog ringtone. Oh, it? yeah. Jess in Melbourne, first song you downloaded. It was Larger Than Life by the Backstreet Boys. Oh, you people, can't you see, can't you see how you love the reality? Oh, yeah. Is this the song yeah. that plays at the end of the movie, uh, This no. Is The End, or It's The End? No, not this song. It's not? No. But it is Backstreet Boys in that. Oh, these are such bangers. I'd love tonight if we could sneak some crazy frog in, bit of Backstreet Boys. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we play a bit of Backstreet Boys right now? If you're listening to this podcast at two times speed... It's the Ben Lehman Bell Podcast. Hey, I know it's a Friday night and we're all getting ready for the weekend, but let's talk true crime for just one second, please. It's a tragedy for me to see the dream is over. If you're like me and you sunk your teeth into that Netflix series about the Menendez brothers and you're following the case at the moment, boy, has it been a huge week for the Menendez brothers. Uh, If you didn't know, before we get into the nitty gritty of the update with their case, we actually do a podcast. Every Sunday, the boys and I, we have a true crime podcast. It's Mm -hmm. only five minutes. So every week we go through a true crime case in five minutes, just Just the real kind of bare minimum of each. And it was only a few months ago that we actually did an episode of the the Menendez brothers. So to get you up to speed, if you're unaware of their case, here's a little taster. Their upbringing was very, very problematic. And that's that's their reasoning for why they killed their mum and dad. Lyle was 21 and Eric was 18. They were quite young. One night they absolutely blew up and they both had um, shotguns. They went in with shotguns into the living room and shot them both. They then did the whole fake 911 call. I've come home, my parents are dead. The way they were found out was because Eric's psychologist, he actually admitted to him, I killed my parents. Oh, and well, like Lyle would be pretty pissed about that whole thing, I'd imagine. Lyle came in because then Eric said to Lyle, I told my psych. He then stepped in and told the psych, well, I'm going to have to kill you now. And then so the psych said, all right, well, now you've threatened my life. Now we have to actually do something about this. Hang on, but he couldn't before the threat? No, you actually, so because Eric admitted to the murder but didn't actually threaten his psychologist's life. They can't go to the police with that. We're also talking 1990 here. Uh, yes. So they were sentenced to life in prison, and like you just heard there, they were age 21 and 19 at the time. This is the end of the 80s, start of the 90s. So the reason that it's in the news this week is because now with the documentaries and the TV series... And Kim Kardashian. Correct, Ben. Oh, he's all over it. Uh, So now you've got um, celebrities like Kim K, you've got family members, attorneys, everybody's coming forward saying... 
maybe maybe they didn't have an easy childhood and maybe they did have a reason for the killing and now they might be retrialed and possibly put out in parole. Well, there you go. If you love true crime, definitely search Ben Lehman Bell wherever you get your pods from. It's great for true crime lovers who are time poor. Yeah. Yes. That's our target there, Mark. <laughs> yeah. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.